Hey everyone, this is Mike St. Jules, and welcome to my video walkthrough. It's for my remix of Gabriel and Dresden featuring Jan Burden, Keep On Holding. It's part of the Remedy remixed album on Injuna Beats, and I appreciated the support from the label as well as the guys for giving me the opportunity to do a remix. And I encourage everyone to check it out if you haven't already. I appreciate the support as always. In today's video walkthrough, I am using FL Studio for this remix, and I'm going to show you how it was basically done. I'm going to show you the plugins, I'm going to show you the arrangement of the track, and actually that will be the first thing I show you here. So I'll close out the mixer, and I will extend this. So basically, uh, I like to color code uh, my arrangements. Uh, going from the very top, we have in uh, pink, we have the vocals. In green, we have the drums, very minimal as you can see. In red, the bass line and uh, bass shot sample from the original production, as well as automation clips that are throughout the uh, track. And in lavender color, we have synths, riffs, uh, the lead, as well as another original um, stem sample. And then in yellow, we have the pads and the chord breakdown, also a stem from the original. And as you can see here, I have other bits of effects as well. So it's actually one of my more simpler tracks. Uh, what I'll do here is I'm going to play. Uh, actually, what I'll also do here is I'll show you the mixer. So the mixer is very, very relatively simple. Uh, on the master, uh, actually, the label has done the mastering of the track. So uh, just to get a sense of what a mastering could sound like, I would use uh, the Sonics uh, Oxford Inflator. I'll also use the Invisible Limiter by AOM. So... As well as other sounds here, we have in the plugins, uh, we do have a drum bus, but I don't have too much there. Sometimes I'll use the glue. I'll also use the J37 by Waves and Valhalla Vintage Verb for a room mix if I need to, and any other additional uh, EQing. Uh, throughout the um, mixer board, I also have the colors that reflect the arrangement in the playlist window. So kick, clap, hats, uh, red is bass lines. And what I'll do is I'll sometimes bus these base layers and put them into a main bus and use it for something like Fruity Mute 2, which basically can kind of uh, silence the entire channel entirely. And I like to use this in automation. Uh, Fruity Balance for a master volume. Uh, this way you don't have to mess around with the uh, input channels because these are more of like inputs, not necessarily volume. And we have a couple of other layers. Um, I use BT Stereo Imager for merging or stereo separation. Uh, sometimes I like to use the regular uh, EQ2. It's quick and easy. But nowadays I like to use uh, FabFilter Pro Q3. And then we also have others here uh, for synths. Um, use things like Fruity Fast Distortion on some of the synths. Uh, we also have the Valvala Vintage Verb again. And uh, transient processor, which is really cool too. You can mess around with attack and release. Works really good for drum loops because you can kind of make it its own unique thing when you drop down the release and then increase it. So uh, it, is, it is a very good tool to use. And we also have the vocals. Um, the main vocals, not too much going on. Again, I use Pro-Q, the original, although I like to use the third uh, version of the uh, plugin. Uh, we have the glue. Again, we have Isotope Nectar, uh, which I just use basically for the de and saturation. A Fruity Stereo Enhancer for stereo width of the vocal. And a Fruity uh, Fast Distortion again, as well as the Valhalla Vintage Verb on the bottom part of the chain. Not too much of the mix. And I usually mess around with the EQ as well as damping and uh, diffusion. So... I will quickly play a part of the vocal here and then we go to the breakdown. So when you get to that part, a lot of the um, sounds here are from, from the original. Um, and I, I know that it wasn't really used um, so much in the original, but I like to use a, a good part of it for the remix just to give some kind of familiarity. So let me play this one. 
so that's the original riff and i want to see where we are in that um that was number 48. So yeah, I added more to it, as you can see over here. Pro-Q, a distortion, Valhalla, and the transient processors that I've indicated earlier, as well as the Nicky Romero kickstart sidechain. So I just kind of helped add that as a thing to kind of keep the track running along. We also have a pad stab. I did use Dave Parkinson's uh, Trans Essentials pack to use the single shot. So what I ended up doing here was I took it, put it into the key of G in its root, and then reworked some of the crossfade and trim. Just to kind of give some kind of atmosphere to the background. And I think without the Valhalla vintage verb, It's the presence of it is still there, but the the fast distortion as well as the Valhalla vintage verb really helped uh, bring that uh, mystifying element into the background. We can also continue to some other sounds as well. For the pads, as you can see here, there's three layers. Uh, we have used Omnisphere, we used Silent. And we use Pro 53, which is a very old native instrument sound. It's actually one of the first plugins I've ever received um, and using my production. So playing them all together. They're kind of low at, net at the point here, but let me just move into the breakdown. This is Pro 53. So this one is actually the original uh, pad from the original track. And then we also added some other noise. Let's just turn that on here. Just some vinyl crackles. And this is from Blue Zone. I'm a very big fan of the sci-fi sound here, so I've added also some other elements as well, like this. Some white noise. There's an impact. And then I would also add um, the uh, white noise throughout the track as well, once we got to the drop of the record. Now we'll go to the vocals here. The vocals uh, are largely from the original track. I'll also show you here what we have in the layers. So uh, a lot of them are the original. I did consolidate one of the, uh, actually a couple of the stems and put it into one. Play that here. So I added it as a stack layer and I've added a uh, fruity effector, which is an effects module, another EQ, we have Fruity Blood Overdrive for Saturation, Fruity Flanger, and also Fruity Mute 2 if I need to completely uh, knock out the signal so you don't hear any of the uh, tail end of the effect. So let's play the vocals all by themselves here. Please give me some reason to keep on holding Cause I'm close to folding Please give me some reason To keep on holding To keep on holding Yeah, so I kept a lot of them. Uh, I think some of them are actually dry as it is. Um, let me see here. So 54 in the insert. Yeah, I just have a, a channel, a transient processor a low pass filter and side chain that I would automate. So when I say dry, I say it in the, st in the, fa in the fact that it's been bounced out from the stem, but I didn't add more treatment to them necessarily. Uh, I think we also had one other sound here. Yeah, so I did that as a repeating uh, effect. So when we get to the build,
So I can next tell you about the drum sequence. Uh, not much is going on in this at all. I had one pattern that played uh, the kick. Let's see. Yeah, just a simple hat sequence and a clap. And uh, I think I had a reverse clap that comes in here, just in the middle of the, the drop section. Um, so very, very simple in terms of that. Not much has gone on with the kick. I do have a transient processor to increase its attack slightly. There's a Pro-Q for that. I uh, disabled these two parts in the frequency spectrum, knocked out some of the low end from the kick so it doesn't conflict with the bass line. Um, so for the bass lines, there's not much going on as well. We have uh, Massive. Uh, not many virtual instruments in this track at all, a lot more uh, sample heavy. So the bass line. So not much there. When we get to the bass line from the, uh, for the track as a self here, uh, again, they are sampled. So two, two sounds, both in the key. Well, one is in the key of D, the other one is F sharp. So top and sub. And I think that's been it pretty much. In the uh, drive section here, we use the original bass line. But what I did was I rearranged it in a, in a part that makes the groove a little different than the original. I did a little bit of an automation to kind of uh, with a fast filter distortion here. Just to give it just a little, give it a little bit more of a rock kind of feel uh, early on. Uh, and then we go to the synths again, very simple sample based. This is in the key of C. And that's side chained. There's not much going on. We use uh, Destructor, which is also pretty cool. There's a speaker cabinet. You have chorus, filter, and distortion. Uh, just very, very small adjustments in that. Uh, there's also Pro-Q for that. There's also uh, Kickstart, as well as a Reverb 2. Uh, I like to use the Fruity Reverb 2 a lot. Just enough decay for a room effect. So this is with it off. Yeah, it makes it more like arena-ish based. Uh, there's some automation as well. I think for this riff shot. Yeah, so those are just simple uh, one shots with um, respective uh, plugins in there, reverb, delay, etc. So pretty uh, much of a rinse and repeat for a lot of this. The lead support plays similar to what the lead does. So there's that. We, I call it a lead support, but also I actually use Vengeance for that. So just one sound, but I also tweaked it around with some other plugins. Uh, one that I like to use a lot sometimes is the FabFilter Timeless 2, a really good plugin for effects. And I think that is almost it here. Um, a lot of the other stuff is just, um, you know, effects and whatnot. So when you get to the, when everything plays together, you get its piece here. So that's about it. I think only one other thing that I had was for the drop support, I had another bass sound, but it's really more of like a percussive tom that just helps keep the track running a little bit longer.
So that's it. This is my remix. Uh, it didn't take me long to do this. Um, we originally had a, a, an, a different idea for the drop and the breakdown, something a bit more big roomy. Um, but ultimately, after some feedback, we decided to kind of change that. And in the breakdown, I also wanted to keep the original pad sequence intact. I did try something a little different, and it, it ultimately did not work out. But uh, I'm happy with the results here, and I'm glad that everybody was able to uh, appreciate the results and being able to have it fully released. So uh, once again, I'm Mike St. Jules. If you want to know more information about me, you can check me out at MikeStJules.com or find me on Twitter at Mike St. Jules. Take care. See you later.